for past earthquakes, uh, this earthquake, uh, this figure tells us that what is, what was the uh, acceleration or velocity or displacement experienced by different structures when that earthquake occurred, right? In one figure, you directly tell that, uh, for example, you can tell that 1.4 second structure experienced an displacement of 4 inches, but 1 second experienced an displacement of almost 6 inches, right? So, on in general, the graph is going up, but it is up and down, it is jaggy or shaky. Now, for single degree of freedom systems, there is a direct application of this graph, which is this one that by just knowing their time period, you, you directly can tell that how much this structure will shake if the same earthquake occur again. right? So, for single degree of freedom system, it can be directly readable it directly tells the peak response, no need to perform the dynamic analysis again, because the dynamic analysis is already performed by, by solving that single degree again and again. So, now you have the summary result of that dynamic analysis. So, you directly use that summary for single degree of freedom system. Once you have this black line for a particular earthquake, you can directly tell for any new structure. For example, one bridge is somewhere here you directly pick that number and directly tell that it will experience 14 inches right in that earthquake for multiple degree of freedom systems this curve becomes the basis of a very detailed or uh, conceptually very elegant kind of seismic analysis procedure and that is called response spectrum analysis right uh, for single degree of freedom systems its use is straightforward but for multiple degree of freedom systems uh, since we know that their response is composed of many modes or their main governing equation of motion can be decomposed into many single degree of freedom system equations. So, we can apply this response spectrum curve to each of those single degree of freedom systems separately and extract the peak response for each single degree of freedom system which is representing a particular mode of that multiple degree of freedom system. Separately, we can extract their peak responses and then combine them to get the overall uh, response of multiple degree of freedom system. This is actually the response spectrum analysis procedure for multiple degree of freedom systems. So, it this curve actually converts our dynamic analysis problem into a static analysis problem. I will show you one example from the single degree of freedom systems. Let us say that you have a, a single degree of freedom system structure and from the response spectrum of an earthquake, you directly pick the u naught maximum displacement. You multiply that u naught with k and get some force. This is a static force which when applied statically to your structure will produce the same displacement as u naught statically. right? So, either you perform dynamic analysis of your single degree of freedom system and solve the whole equation and finally, get the maximum displacement u naught or you apply statically these forces f s naught to your structure and perform static analysis and get the same response. right? and that f s naught can be calculated by multiplying k with u naught and u naught can be coming from the response spectrum directly. right? So, response spectrum can convert your dynamic problem into static problem. So, I can show you maybe one representation here like this. You have a single degree of freedom system and you want to calculate the forces and every responses. One option is that you apply the actual earthquake, solve the real governing equation of motion and perform dynamic analysis and you will get the displacement and all responses. But if you have the response spectrum already available with you, one trick you can invoke here is that from that response spectrum pick directly the maximum displacement. If the time period can be calculated, directly pick the displacement, multiply that displacement by k value and get a hypothetical force that hypothetical force when applied statically will produce the same displacement and all same responses. But obviously, those responses will be only peak responses 
in dynamic analysis case you will get the complete history of responses right so this will be the difference but otherwise you can elegantly convert your dynamic problem into a static problem if you have that response spectrum curve right so it significantly simplifies our effort so all we need to do is to simply calculate the time period of our structure go to the response spectrum pick the maximum displacement multiply it with the k value to get the hypothetical equivalent static forces these ones and apply those forces as the applied loading right and then solve f is equal to ku and all, all the responses can be calculated obviously there will be peak responses not the history of responses but mostly you are interested in peak responses only so this scheme will work right for single degree of freedom system this is very straightforward one step process for multiple degree of freedom system you have to do it mode by mode for each mode you consider it as a single degree pick its own response acceleration or peak displacement from the spectrum corresponding to its time period convert it into equivalent static force apply those forces get the response and then again combine for different modes right so although i am not going into the response spectrum analysis itself but just want to give you an idea that this curve is very useful this representation of an existing earthquake is very useful it has many applications uh, it gives you very clear picture but on the same time it is directly useful in seismic analysis procedures right so now let's go to the future earthquake case this is an example by the way which tells us that how we can use that response spectrum curve for single degree of freedom system case so uh, let's say this is a, a kind of a storage tank water storage structure and it has mass and let's assume that we can model it as a single degree of freedom system so let's say that it is subjected to an earthquake for which the response spectrum is available right this is the key point el centro earthquake so its spectrum is available so all we need to do is calculate its time period from its m and k go to that spectrum and pick the peak number right that peak number displacement can be multiplied with k again to get the fso so now either you apply an earthquake or apply fso same thing right so you converted dynamic problem into static problem right so i'll skip that because i just explained the whole problem in one line so k is calculated m is calculated from that time period is calculated from that time period you go to spectrum pick the maximum response now this is another representation of the same spectrum uh, currently we know that there can be a displacement spectrum there can be a velocity spectrum there can be an acceleration spectrum but uh, they can be approximately converted into each other if the maximum displacement is called d i can multiply d with omega to get the maximum velocity uh, you can say estimate and i can multiply omega square with d to get the maximum acceleration estimate so which means that if you have one spectrum you can convert it into velocity and acceleration spectra since the main thing is d and omega is already part of the x axis so it is mathematically possible to represent all three spectra in one figure and that is called this uh, this uh, spectrum it have a special name dva spectrum dva means displacement velocity acceleration spectrum all in one figure so here you have time period on x axis on y axis you have the maximum velocity response v but you also have some diagonal axes in the same plane uh, and uh, those diagonal diagonal axes show acceleration and uh, displacement so uh, the way how you read it is like this that let's say that you want to calc to pick the same peak responses for 1.59 seconds so you start 1.59 and hit that black line or the spectrum line from that point you uh, make a perpendicular line to both of the diagonal axes these will give you the peak displacement and peak acceleration for that earthquake 
and from the same point if you go horizontal you get the same peak velocity right so from the same curve you directly get the d value v value and a value maximum response in displacement velocity and acceleration experienced by your single degree of freedom system if it is subjected to an earthquake for which you have this spectrum and if it has a damping ratio for which this spectrum is plotted right so if i if let's say that this spectrum is plotted for xi equal to 5% if i plot for the same earthquake another spectrum for a damping of 10% obviously it will be a line which will be lower than this one for 15 uh, for maybe 2% it will be more than this one right so for different damping ratios you can repeat that exercise to plot a family of response spectra uh, for different damping ratios right so please go through the all all this information and all these slides and i also have a detailed playlist on response spectrum analysis in which i step by step uh, introduce all these concepts right so now you have enough information about the concept of response spectrum right yes, yes. now towards the end let's now convert or actually uh, shift that discussion to future earthquake which should be used for the design of new buildings right all that discussion up till now was about past earthquake now you know that any given time history can be converted into another form which is called response spectrum the most common form is the acceleration response spectrum and it has this kind of a shape it is irregular depending upon the type of earthquake but generally it has this kind of a shape right so this peak acceleration response acceleration is also called spectral acceleration actually it can be approximately calculated from the maximum displacement by multiplying with omega square right so now i will uh, call this acceleration response spectrum a graph which has the spectral acceleration on y axis and time period on x axis time period of the structure or time period of single degree of freedom system on x axis so now you know that uh, the spectral acceleration is the peak response acceleration right which is experienced under a particular earthquake 